Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Source Podcast. Uh, I think it would be appropriate to say this is a super massive episode. Uh, it's one I hope you all listen to right away because there is uh, a little bit of a ticking clock. Uh, we are here to talk about the super massive crossover that's coming uh, on February 16th. It will be released from Image Comics. We have three of the, of the creators for three of the heroes that are going to be in this uh, crossover. We have Kyle Higgins, Radiant Black, which has been you know knocking our socks off. You can, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see my shirt, which. How awesome does it look like the radiance actually glowing? It does. It looked, I thought, <laughs> yeah. like, is there LEDs in that or yeah. something? <laughs> it's incredible. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we also have Matt Groom, who had the incredibly successful uh, Kickstarter for Infernal Girl Red, which is moving right along. And then we have Ryan Parrott, uh, another friend of the show, who has uh, his own title coming out from Image later this year called Rogue Sun. Uh, so, gentlemen, thanks for taking the time to join me. Really excited to talk about Super Massive. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. Again. Yeah, so I, I think I'm going to throw it over to Ryan. We always go to, to, to Kyle to, to give the elevator pitch. I'm going to go to Ryan this time. Ryan, give us the elevator pitch about uh, Supermassive. There hasn't been a whole lot out there yet. Uh, so in your words, what, what is this giant superhero crossover event all about? I, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the Joker just was like, you know, me and Batman always fight, but like send Robin in for the first time. Let's see how we'll do it. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see what I got. Um, all right. So super massive is the combination uh, is. Uh, yes, yeah, he wasn't prepared at all. Um, super massive is uh, sort of the it's the it's uh, Kyle. What do you think it is? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of our like um, see for radium. It's something different for every character, but it's it's. First and foremost, it is in the state. It's in the tradition of kind of crossover movie events and things that you would see. I mean, you you see it a lot in um, in Sentai or in Common Rider, um, where they have the special at the end of the season, um, and characters meet and then they go their separate ways. And so for this, we much in the way that Radiant Black, we were envisioning. You know, I mean, look, this, the whole idea of like a superhero series for a new generation, like, you know, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't take that literally or any like buy into it in, in a, like a huge meaningful way, but in the spirit of it, trying to do things a little differently or at the, or at least ways where it's like, Hey, that might be a little better way to do something like that. We approach the idea of doing an event through that spirit so that, you know, for Rogue Sun, it's kicking off, um, his series that de then debuts a week later um, from Ryan and Abel for Infernal Girl Red. It comes at a different point in her story, but it gives a pretty fantastic glimpse at um, who she is and what her adventures are going to, to look like um, as her OGN uh, continues, you know, actively being developed and made um, by uh, Erica D'Arso and Matt and Igor and Becca Carey. Uh, and then for Radiant Black, it's something of a season two, like premiere kickoff event. And so we meet Marshall shortly after the status quo of, of issue 11. And, and um, there are, you know, like any sort of um, primetime movie event, uh, if you're kicking off a season, um, it's a really play out this old 90s TV uh, analogy or metaphor. Um, we'll have some glimpses and some teases of um, some things that are to come and some challenges that are, uh, you know, about to make Marshall's life a whole lot uh, more cosmic at some point down the line here. Gotcha. That, yeah, I think that's uh, that's fantastic because you touch on, you're touching on something there, Kyle, which is really exciting for me as a fan and as a reader. We are, for the first time, going to see Ryan's uh, hero, Ryan's creation, Rogue Son. And also getting a chance to see, we've learned a little bit about Inferno Girl Red, if you were, you know, part of the, the Kickstarter campaign, everybody, and, and Matt and his team gave us some information on that campaign page. But this is really the first time we're going to kind of see her in action. So, Matt, let me ask you, uh, a little nervous, a little anticipatory to finally see her in the, in the pages of a comic, even though it's, it's not the OGN yet, but we're going we're gonna to see her come to life, so to speak, a, a little bit. How are you feeling about that? Yeah, um, I probably should be nervous now that you've said that. <laughs> Upon reflection, oh, <laughs> perhaps some nervousness would be warranted. Uh, instead, it's just a great sense of relief. Mm. Uh, I think that in Infernal Go Red, because of the way we're doing it, which I'm very happy with and proud of, we are producing this massive 120-page OGN, and I'm extremely excited about it. I think it looks fantastic. It's going to like, really do it for people. But 
it's still like a ways off yet, uh, a little sooner for people who back the Kickstarter, a little later for people who who didn't. And this is a really exciting way to uh, get a pretty sizable taste of that uh, bef- before the OGN comes out. We're actually, the events of Supermassive for Inferno Goretta set after the OGN, which is sort of her origin story. So we're going to get a bit of a glimpse into the sort of hero that she becomes without ruining anything of, of the surprises and the substance of the OGN. Uh, and I think it's just, it's such an exciting way to do it, to be like very little context, very little setup, just like here's in front of go red. Like you dig it. Great. More's on the way, you know? Right. And then for, for you, Ryan, Kyle, Kyle mentioned, we're going to see uh, rogue son make his debut here in Supermassive, But then a week later, your, your own series is starting did you always know that that was going to be the, the way we were going to get a little a, a taste of him in the Supermassive and then his, uh, his series was going to kick off? Was that always the, the original plan? Any challenges doing it that way? Um, it was always a back and forth. It was a conversation. And I, I apologize for dropping the ball earlier. I was, I've been so used to talking about Rogue Sun and, it, and just Rogue Sun. All of a sudden I was like, wait, I got to talk about other characters? I don't know what to do anymore. So like, I, I'm going to redeem myself with this answer, hopefully. Um, but yeah, we, we discussed it. I think one of the things that was fun was we, we always wanted Rogue Sun to be sort of like its own entry point. If you read that book, you don't have to have read Supermassive. You'll understand everything you need to know about the character just because that's, you know, which is, you want to try and give fans as many, um, you know, easy ways as possible. But then we discovered well, there was an opportunity to sort of expand out um, the character, like show you a character that isn't in the Rogue Son, isn't in Rogue Son as much, the Marcus character, and how that would give you backstory and context and, and give the people who read it, who read both, a little bit more uh, understanding of the relationships that, that go through the next series. That seemed like a great way to do that. So, I mean, I, and what I like about it too is it may sort of give, makes everything sort of it stand on its own in a little bit. There's like each one's a little chapter that you can read. And it, like you said, if you read all of them, it's, it's, it's helpful and additive, but if you don't, it's okay. So it's like we kind of got the best of both worlds. Now, Kyle, you always talk about swinging for, for the fences. You know, you and I have talked about it a, a lot, about how you're really trying to, to give more value and, and to really exceed and, and in a way subvert expectations. So as readers and fans, we never know what's coming next. Uh, and then when we do have the rug pulled out from under, it's, it's fun and it's exciting and, and uh, you know, it's in, it's in sort of a good way. Um, you've known these two guys for a long time. You've collaborated on, on other things. In, in what way has uh, your past relationships kind of, allowed you to, to come together on these properties and, and how excited are you to see their heroes come into kind of the, the radiant black universe? Well, I mean, probably first and foremost, those prior relationships are the only thing keeping them all from killing me uh, <laughs> in the process of <laughs> putting this book together. Um, no, I, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, this is like, this is the dream. Like it's, it's what you, it's what you, why you want to make comics you know like and as much as you know it, it matt's kind of just starting his work for hire career here mm-hmm. um you know we do ultraman together at marvel he's had some work a little bit of work at dc he's doing work on power rangers now um and ryan you know ryan has done a whole lot of Power Rangers comics. Um, I think Ryan is that the technical? Is that actually the, the, <laughs> yeah, the that's, number? A whole that's the, the official of, number. Whole the lot official of, number. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as uh, you know a variety of not only creator owned books but um, licensed books, working with other people's characters. And at its best, you have something like Ryan and I had when we were doing Power Rangers when I was um, when we were doing like Shattered Grid, which was a really you know a supportive. Um, a brand that people were going to buy or were had interest in at least. So there was visibility on what we were creating and we had license holders who were really supportive of some of our creative ambitions. Um, but with that, there were still people that could say no, there were still things we couldn't do. There were mm-hmm. still limitations and decisions that we couldn't make. Um, and so when you trade uh, a way that kind of like established brand, you th- you would think, well, then you really can't do kind of that the big superhero stuff because there really isn't anywhere to do it without people that have very rightfully so like um, eyes on managing characters and said brand. So to have something here just a year into building out Radiant Black where we can do a crossover and two of my closest friends can 
you know, it's additive to their worlds and books as well. Like, that's just like, God, it's great. And by the way, like right before this call, like I actually read Supermassive at, in its current form. Uh, I read Supermassive and then Rogue Sun 1 and 2 and Radiant Red 1 all back to back to back. And it was a really cool experience, especially going Supermassive to Rogue Sun. Um, I think, Ryan, I, th- I, think, I think you've really got something here. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm excited to read Supermassive, so yes. <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, I'm excited uh, for all of it. Let me, let me ask you, Matt, because um, you, know, you, you have worked with Kyle in the past. Um, you, you know, you're working with him on, uh, on Ultraman, as he said. You've kind of seen over the, the last year, 2021, how Radiant Black has, has really hit and kind yeah. of uh, become its own community, you know, really strong fan base. And, <laughs> you know, there's a c- circle guy news, a Twitter account, just all this kind of fun stuff. Um, how excited are you to become a, a part of that community? And have you already had people reaching out, like asking questions about Infernal Girl? Do they already kind of think of her as part of the, the Radiant Black universe? Yeah, hugely. I think there's like the community has been incredibly welcoming. Like there's a, there's a discord uh, that's been set up and it's, confronting in a great way how interested they are in everything and how everything connects and like the eye for detail there. Um, And I think it's so exciting this time because often Kyle's alluding to this a little bit when you're working with a larger brand, you have to be very careful about the sorts of questions you answer and how you answer them and what you say. Whereas now if I'm asked a question about Inferno Go Red, I will answer that question. And like, let's look, say I'm like, it would have spoiled the book because I myself don't want to do that and ruin the book for you. But if someone's like, you know, if there's more crossovers, will Inferno Go Red show up? I could be like, yeah, I, if it feels right. Yeah. Whereas if that was like Marvel or DC, it would be like, well, if the editor says so, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, um, we get, we get to, make the right decisions for the characters every time without exception. And I think that's where a lot of the community and excitement has come from. Also real quick, just to, to piggyback on that. um, When you're talking about, like, as you were, um, you were discussing like the the community around um, like radiant black Mm. universe, as you put it. Um, So what's kind of, what's been a lot of fun about this. we, We were all just talking about this the other day. Um, so this name kind of organically came out of that, you know, the, the community, the, you know, the massive verse, uh, which we all quite like, mm-hmm. um, that said, um, you know, we are, you know, I think Ryan, you got, you mentioned like someone asked you on an interview, like, well, like, you know, could you cross over with the image superhero universe? And you're like, well, no, we are the image superhero yeah. universe. Like right. we're just a cor- the massive verse is just like a corner of the image superhero universe that's the way that we we all think of it anyway you know is savage dragon going to be in radiant black i mean i don't know but i'm not going to say you know i'm not going to say no right um well actually no he's not he's actually not (laughs) i actually actually don't have any plans for that (laughs) but i think you understand what i mean like we you know we're the whole the point of this was to to come in and and you know we are the generation that was inspired by um, creator owned superheroes mm-hmm. the first time around, you know, the first really, I would say creator owned superheroes that were that kind of meaningful and in, in such a broad commercial way at that time, um, you know, to come in now and basically even, even be inspired by the tokusatsu genre, the, uh, the aesthetic of the helmeted uh, and transforming hero we're also the generation that grew up on the phenomenon of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yep. And, and so especially since so much of, you know, for me, Radiant Black deals with kind of these issues of our time, especially for, for you know, 30s millennials, um, millennials in their 30s, I should say. I think it's kind of fitting that the superhero aesthetic uh, is something that is so specifically associated to, to our childhood. Hmm. And can I add one thing that might be slightly controversial, but it's something yeah. that Matt said that kind of sparked something I thought was interesting. It was like, you asked earlier if, it, if we were nervous about our characters coming in the world. Well, the one thing that's really cool and nice about 
you know, creator owned books as opposed to working in licensed work is that we still own our characters. And I mean, own in regards to we own like the expectation and like, like if, if, for instance, like Power Rangers has been around for so long, the fans know those characters have really strong connections to those characters, believe that. And, and I say this with all due respect, believe they know how those characters should act and talk and speak at all times, just like we do. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you write them, there's already a set. Uh, there's always a, a, a sort of a back and forth where it's like, you know, if we don't meet those expectations, it can come pretty quick. But what's really great about our own creator ones at this age, no one's going to no one can read M Rogue Son number one and be like, you know, what? that's not how Dal Dylan talks. That's not how his dad was made. like there. That, that hasn't been set up yet so there is something that's kind of cool about that where there it, it, which i think is great for readers is because they don't know where we're going to go they don't know yeah. we can zig and zag in different ways and and hopefully surprise them um and 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 they can learn and ho now what's great is if the book stays around long enough gonna knock on wood there will be a time when they will be able to say well that's not how that character talks and that and then we'll have yeah. to own that up and but but I, I hope it's not i don't mean that in a negative way i just mean that there's a a certain level of like excitement for me that i know why I can finally surprise, hopefully surprise readers in a way that I don't think I was ever able to before when working with existing characters. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because that's I great. mean, okay. Kyle pulled the rug and his team pulled the rug out from under us with, you know, what happened to Nathan early on in Radiant Black. I'm excited for you, Ryan, because, you know, like Kyle was saying earlier, you, you've written a whole lot, the exact number, a whole lot of Power Rangers, <laughs> but, but, you know, to the point, that's a, that's an IP that's worth, you know, millions, if not billions of dollars. So there's always that oversight, you know, mm -hmm. and I've, I've read plenty of other creator, creator owned stuff that you've done, but it hasn't been superhero stuff, you know, right. You've done Oberon, you've done Beth Day. This is, you know, our, your chance to really do something in the superhero genre that is completely your own, like you were saying. So, um, I'm hoping to have you on to, to do a Rogue Sun Spotlight and, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but in case anybody wants to know now, or give, give us a little bit of hint. Like, who is Dylan? Who is Rogue Sun? Oh, okay. Yeah. So Rogue Sun um, is, uh, follows a sort of a rebellious teenager named Dylan Siegel, who um, his father left when he was two. And um, Dylan is kind of turned into, I uh, wouldn't call him a nice guy. Um, he's a bit of a bully. And uh, I don't think we can swear, but I won't use those words. Uh, and uh, so when you first meet him in the first book, he's got a kid, you know, pushed into a locker. And one of the things I, I really liked about the story was usually when you do a superhero book, you're following the kid that's in the locker. And so we're going to follow the story of the kid who's on the outside and when he pushed him in. And so what he learns pretty quickly into the story is that his father passed away and uh, he, that his father was a superhero and has left him his powers and mantle. So now in order to sort of become a superhero, he has to sort of learn about the dad he's hated his entire life. And how do you gain sort of validation from somebody who's already gone? Um, and, and, you know, so I, I thought there was something fun to do with that because I thought there was an interesting different character take and there's a lot of fun legacy stuff in it. So that's, that's Rogue Son in sort of a nutshell. Wow, it sounds fantastic. And it sounds like there's going to be lots of room for character and emotion work, which you, you excel at. So. Thank you. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, it's already fun. I was working on the uh, one of the issues today and I got to a spot where I realized I always do the same thing uh, in all the books I write. And I went, you know what? We're not going to do that here. We're going to flip that. And so what's that? And that's a nice thing. When you've written a lot of books, you start to see your own patterns. You start to see those things where, that you drop into. And it's and so for, for the first time in a long time, that sounds like I'm not hard working hard. But I mean, in the sense of like, I think I was finally able to see oh, wow, I've done that before. I've used that before. And now I have the ability and freedom to, to subvert it in a way that I wasn't, I wouldn't have normally had in the other book. So I'm excited about that. Cool. Uh, if anybody's kind of curious about the, the story that's actually in Supermassive, obviously we don't want to spoil Kyle, but can you, can you give us any hints about, you know, what the, the actual uh, kind of backbone of the story is? <clears throat> um, well, I would say that a, via a confluence of events, um, Cassia Costa, uh, who will better soon better be known as Infernal Girl Red, uh, makes it to our dimension, and sh she may not be the only thing that came through with her. Gotcha. Um, from there, I would say that um, you know, Ryan. I think it's probably fair. I think you could probably describe the types of the type of superhero Rogue Son is conceptually like right. who he guards us against oh yeah 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 totally i probably should have done that uh yeah so marcus is in the story and marcus bell when you meet him as rogue son in supermassive is uh, a defender against the supernatural and mm -hmm. where those where supernatural forces come from whether that's from 
you know, uh, the, beyond life and death or another dimension or whatever is sort of like de- it's up to debate and we don't have enough time on this podcast to do that so, <laughs> slash yeah. slash that might be some of the book's core mythology yeah so yeah so we have so when there is a there when there's a breach from another uh from another plane uh Realm, marcus yeah. stepped right exactly um marcus finds himself sort of drawn to that which is, leads him into connection with with Red, Fern- red and radiant black and all yeah. of and and then chaos ensues and radiant black uh has a giant cosmic jiminy cricket robot who is in tune with energies and things of that nature and so um like i said a confluence of events uh bring our heroes together um to solve a problem that may or may not lead to much bigger problems cool but yeah is that a fair is that a is yeah no that that's did i successfully pitch yes. that matt yes. i discovered yeah, the healing I, power of friendship <laughs> <laughs> and generational I, generational I, friendships i would say that but i think that so maybe like <laughs> in terms of talk, talking super broadly <laughs> and a little bit the when the, these three are brought together by very like cosmic large-scale things and it does cause some problems. And once those problems hit, it reframes the situation for all three of them that I think causes a lot of introspection. And I think we wanted to make sure as much as this was like a big bombastic adventure, it was also the story of three people whose perspective on things has changed because they met each other. Um, I hope I've actually said this to you guys, but I, I think a little bit about um, the film Collateral. And how it's just like two guys who are extremely different have nothing in common, but in one night their paths cross and it completely changes their life life philosophies. And I probably wouldn't quite go that far for these three, but I think it certainly has a similar effect of they are they each change how the others look at, at the world in a slightly different way, I think. Well that, that... And I look like Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's interesting that you say that, Matt, because like, like you mentioned earlier, you know, we still have the OGN of Infernal Girl to come. That's really her origin story where she's at in Supermassive is further along her, 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 you know, life, her, her path mm. that she's taking. Was it a challenge to kind of leap ahead or do you know her, you know, she's so fully formed in your mind that you kind of were able to, you know, kind of forecast out where she would be at this point in Supermassive, basically? I know her pretty well. And I also know what the book is about and the book as it goes and hopefully will continue to go uh it it really is about the power of belief and faith and how much that can propel you forward and help you to make like important changes but also about the dangers and pitfalls of faith and belief and i think that for every step that Cassia takes in the right direction, it leads her towards danger in that realm as well. And I think knowing where Cassia was in her journey, knowing how much she will have accomplished and what sort of she's gotten past, but also where that might sort of take her, helped inform where she was into a massive and, and how that might inform that interaction with the others. And I'm speaking super vaguely because I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, I had a pretty good idea of where she was at and what that would mean. Cool. Now, is uh, for whoever wants to, to answer this, is when we talk about this super massive one shot that's coming out on February sixteenth, I'm sure not all the plot threads are are tied up. But is it should we consider it to be a complete story, or is it really just the kickoff of a of a larger thing? I mean, I'm sure that these heroes are going to come back together again at some point. But let's say somebody hasn't obviously they haven't picked up the Inferno Girl OGN yet. Uh, Rogue Sun's not out yet. Maybe they haven't even been reading Radiant Black. Uh, would you say that they can pick this up and and you know hit the ground running and, and get a complete story? I yeah. would for sure. I mean, I literally That's just it. dropped a line into the book where Radiant Black references that he has gravity powers because maybe this is somebody's first right. interaction with even Radiant Black. Like this should be as contained and as narratively satisfying onto uh, onto its own as possible, while still being additive if you're reading all the other um, books and series. Great. Yeah, I think that, to, yeah go it, ahead, Matt. The, the idea with Supermassive was to, I think, really put a stake in the ground about this is our 
universe, although it's not even just one universe, so it's a little confusing in that sense, but this is our realm of characters. And this is the ambition that we have, the sort of stories we want to tell, but it is one story. And it's not like the massive verse isn't these three people specifically and exclusively, you know, like maybe we'll do one of these in the future. Maybe Inferno Go Red won't be in it because it won't be right for the character or the story. Maybe it'll be someone else. Could be any combination. Who knows? So it we want to make sure that when we do these things, it's for the right reasons and it fits the the world and the story properly. So yeah, it's like this is this is it for this story. And then if there's more, great, but it probably won't be anything like this. It'll be something else again. Gotcha. And uh Ryan, have you, uh, you know, I asked Matt earlier about the community and excitement um, for rating black readers and fans uh, about Inferno Girl. What about for uh, Rogue Sun? Have you had people reaching out, like letting you know that they can't wait to uh, to see it on the stand? <laughs> yeah, actually, I went into the Discord and then I got a little overwhelmed. <laughs> 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 wow. Which, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not as, I'm not as vocal. And, and so, but like, it was kind of cool because I went in there and there was like all these questions and stuff and they'd already like dissected the, the preview pages and i was like holy moly so wow, like, cool. i gotta well it makes you force it kind of makes you you know up your game a little bit you're like all right, right I, I gotta make sure that you know people are paying attention so before it was just me and two people now it's, it's a little it's a little bigger but no they're awesome and and the people on the on twitter have been really cool and ask, like it's been really fun i've, I've had a, a lot of really good in, interaction it's, it's always weird to when people are like i'm really excited for your for your book and i'm like really like, like I, it's, I don't, I mean, this guy says more about me than anybody else. It's just like, I'm sort of surprised and excited, but it's so cool when like people will read it. And, and I, I, and you know, some people have, I've, I've sent out some early versions to some people who, who have been interviewing me and stuff and they've read it and really liked it and, and asked questions and made me come up with answers I didn't have on the spot, which is even better. So you have answers when you write it. So yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been fun. I'm it's, this is always an exciting, fun, exciting. And these also, I would say these interviews are so helpful when you are building out your book at the beginning, because talking about it and expressing it out in words, it actually can help you really focus when you're writing them. Yeah. You and I have talked about, talked about that before. Uh, well, one last question for you, Kyle. Uh, I know you you always take such care in the production value of, of the book. You know, when it comes to the, the colors and the lettering, you just want it to just pop and really be, you know, a, a collectible on top of being a great story. Uh, who's the who's the artist on Supermassive? And and uh, talk to us about any uh, any production things that you you really are yeah. happy with how they turned out. So our our main primary artist is Francesco Mana, who was um, Matt and my artist on our whole um, Ultraman run up to this point uh, with Marvel. And then joining him is Igor Monti, who is both the colorist on Inferno Girl Red, um, but he also is, uh, he'll be coming on Radiant Black um, as a series colorist um, down the line here. He's he's jumped in here and there when you know on, on real special issues like our our blacklight uh, issue ten, um, so Igor colored the whole book and then Simone uh, Ragazzoni from the the new Power Rangers uh, is it Universe guys or Power Rangers Unlimited what is it called Unlimited I think from Power oh, Rangers sorry. Universe yeah, he universe, stepped yeah. in to help out on uh, a, a section of pages in Supermassive as well. Um, Francesco just had a baby. Um, so, uh, deadlines, you know, being what they are, right, uh, especially yeah. in these times. So, uh, is, so yeah, is, so that's is super massive that and carry lettered as well. Is super massive, a, 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 a baby name we could throw out there as a possible option. <laughs> I mean, to... this is creator owned. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is my child super massive. I'd be like, that is an awesome name. Well done. Yeah. Sure. Fantastic. Uh, well, as we're winding up here, I want to give you guys a, a chance to promote anything else you have uh, coming out. We'll start with you, Matt. Um, anything else we should be looking for on the stands? Yes, but I can't say what. Um, but yeah, Inferno Goret is on the way. Ultraman will be back sometime soon. I'm on uh, Mighty Morphin, starting with 17, uh, running alongside Ryan and sort of adding some small pieces to this grand saga that he's weaving. And think that's all i can yeah that's it i can say for now yeah cool. and if you if, if you could slow down writing those scripts so that i don't look so bad that would be fantastic <laughs> by the way thank you yeah and, and i haven't had a chance to tell you congrats on that on the mighty morphin matt because i know that's oh, thank that's you. a dream come true for you and what a power rangers uh, fan you are uh, remind everybody where they can find you on uh, social media so they can follow along and know when these things are, are hitting yeah uh, i'm 
Matthew Groom on Twitter. That's Matthew with one T, G R O O M. Uh, and you can also follow Inferno Go Red on Twitter, all one word. Okay. And how, uh, how about you, Ryan? What do you have coming out these days? Uh, right now, just Power Rangers, which is nice. Um, a nice break. Um, and that's pretty much it right now. There's some other stuff down the pipeline, but we'll know about that down the line. Um, and then you can find me on Twitter at that Ryan Parrot, uh, two R's, two T's. Cool. And uh, for anybody who, who doesn't listen to the Comic Source podcast on a regular basis, as we cover all of, of Kyle's books, uh, remind everybody, Kyle, what you have uh, coming out. Good luck, Kyle. Don't take a nap. Hey, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know guys. <laughs> I don't know. We've got uh well, we've got Radiant Black. Um, we've got Ordinary Gods. We've got Radiant Red from Cherish Chen and David Lafuente starting up. Radiant Black is about to kick into year two, starting with issue 13. Sorry, I think I have an ear infection or something. I'm in a ton of pain right now, like throughout this. I don't know what happened. It got like bad, like on the podcast. Yeah. Like a, like I can't it won't clear, so I'm not sure if it's yeah. Um and uh she just and had one then, other one announced, right? Coming later. Oh, I have a new, uh, a little project called Shift that I'm doing with Daniele Di Nicolo and Walter Biamonte. So it's the Shattered Grid team reunited here, Power Rangers Shattered Grid. And we're doing a series of stories in the Image, uh, Image, exclamation point, anthology series, maxi series that was just announced. And so Shift is Radiant Black Universe and has, a, has an interesting relationship to that universe. So this will be fun. It's the first time Daniele and I have done interior pages together since uh, the end of Shattered Grid. Cool. And remind everybody where they can find you online. Oh, social media at Kyle D. Higgins. But then honestly, I don't really post very much. Um, I retweet a bunch of stuff. Um, so like the at Radiant BLK account for Radiant Black and the at Black Market NAR account for Black Market Narrative. Yeah, and I'll put a link to the Black Market Newsletter awesome. in the show notes, as well as everybody's social media uh, listeners. So if you're having trouble finding them, you can go there. Uh, really excited for Supermassive, guys. Really appreciate the time. Just a reminder to all you listeners, the FOC, the final order cutoff for uh, Supermassive is this Monday. So you, you really want to let your retailer know because it's, it, there's no plans to reprint this February 16th. If you don't get a copy, you may be out of luck. So Best thing you can do to help your retailers, best thing you can do to help these guys and a whole super massive team is let your retailer know. So you got a, you got a couple days to let your retailer know you want it. Uh, it's going to be super massive. You're, everybody's going to be talking about it. You're not going to want to miss it. So, uh, gentlemen, thanks so much for, for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, anything else? I'll throw it open. Anybody else have anything to add real quick before we sign off? No, just that it's oh, lovely. Thanks so much for having us. So thank you. Pleasure being here. Yeah, yep. pleasure as always. So uh, to you listeners, thank you also for listening as always. We appreciate the support and we'll talk to you next time.